Hi, Rachel. It's uh, lovely to see you and uh, catch up with you. Uh, yeah. And Hi. Yeah, you're, lovely to see you. And so you're in uh, Vienna. Uh, mm -hmm. Just so that uh, everyone sort of knows a bit about you, um, what's brought you to Vienna and what are you doing there? Uh, I work in Vienna for OM, Operation yep. Mobilization, uh, which is um, a Christian organization. And I work especially amongst musicians. So sharing the good news of Jesus amongst musicians through Bible studies, that kind of thing. And also through music, uh, reaching out to others. So organizing concerts yep. and other artistic events um, to, to share about Jesus. That's what I do. Yeah. So what sort of groups do you tend to find yourself with most of all, within all that? Um, yeah, we have, um, so at the moment, especially during the lockdown, I've been doing lots of online Bible studies. Um, yeah. So I have one group, which is the Music University student group. Then yep. there's another group, which is an artist's Bible study. It's a bit broader, older people. Um, I do some one-to-one -one studies as well with some international students who've come to Vienna to study um, music in some shape or form. Um, but then also, normally, when we are doing more outreach projects, uh, that might include artists coming from abroad. We were supposed to have an Easter outreach, for example, where there were going to be dancers from the US and mm -hmm. musicians from different places, actors and so on. Um, but obviously that had to be cancelled. Yeah, yeah. So thinking of the coronavirus, I mean, how has that affected Vienna and you personally? Mm. Uh, yeah, in Vienna or in Austria generally, the government decided to lock down quite early and quite severely. Mm. So they were very strict, I think, because we're neighboring a neighboring country of Italy mm. and their things were obviously, you know, very stressful and, and very yeah. serious. And so, um, yeah, they were very strict. Nobody is allowed into old people's homes. Grandparents do not look after your grandchildren. Mm. Uh, shops were all closed and so on and so on. Um, so yeah, it was pretty drastic for five, six, seven weeks or so. Um, and now they're gradually opening things up, but it's still like this new normal is very far from normal. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be weird uh, everywhere, isn't it? I mean, um, mm -hmm. uh, 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 we're just beginning to uh, talk about easing the lockdown. Um, and that's a church thing as well. How is that going to happen? Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, the new normal, yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be weird compared to uh, what it was before. Yeah. So while you were in lockdown, uh, you mm. got creative. Uh, mm. What was motivating you in that? It was actually I was watching an online service from my church here in Vienna, and they gave us a few minutes uh, within that just to pray our own prayers to talk to God as we would want to. And I just told him during that time, I said, oh, I'm feeling really restricted and cooped up mm. and just told him how I was feeling, basically. Mm. And suddenly I had this realization that he knew exactly how I felt, because mm. when he came down from his comfortable, heavenly, um, you know, uh, relationship with his father where everything was perfect and so on, he restricted himself to a human form. And then, you know, he restricted himself even more when he was put on the cross and in the tomb and so on. Mm. And I just began to realize, yeah, and he socially distanced himself from his father or physically mm. distanced himself. And, mm. and all of this and uh, just in Hebrews 4, where it talks about we don't have a high priest who can't empathize with us, but we have somebody who knows what it's like. He's been through even this strange situation, mm. uh, not quite the same, but still he mm. can empathize, he can sympathize mm. and he can help us in that. And he somehow managed to do all of that without sin. Um, so that just really helped me uh, personally. And then I began to think about how to maybe try and share that good news with other people. And yeah, and I, I, I first I just jotted some thoughts down and then I was praying about trying to turn it into a video and I've never mm. made a video like that before. Mm. Mm. I don't have a clue about technology and stuff. So yeah. I was praying and wondering who might be able to help me. And then yeah. after I'd finished praying, I looked at my phone and the guy who ended up producing the video had contacted me during that time. Wow. And wow. I just awesome. Thought, okay. I think this is from God. And his, her, um, his yeah. wife drew the drawings. They make, she's yeah. really fantastic with the drawings. So. Yeah. Oh, that's a wonderful story. Uh, mm. Yeah. It's a real example of... Uh, communication between you and God, and I think mm -hmm. that's uh, really wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Rachel, thank you so much for uh, sharing that with us. You're and, welcome. Uh, we're we're going to be watching that uh, next up. Thank you, yeah. Rachel.